Okay, on our math practice, we have here uh, five word problems, and these are very explicit, very direct, meaning that from the language of the words, you can figure out the number and the set equation you're trying to create. So I'm looking at keywords, okay? So everywhere I circle in red, these are keywords that you should know. For example, number one, difference. Difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So my equation is going to have um, subtraction in it. So number one, there's some subtraction involved. And the answer to a subtraction problem is known as a difference. By the way, you don't have to copy me because this will be on YouTube. However, feel free to do whatever you need to be responsible. In subtraction, order matters. So the first number they say is simply a number. I don't know what that is, so I'll use n to represent that number. The second is 85 hundredths, right Jocelyn? All right, Jessica? So I'm going to put 0 0.85 in there. Now the word is means equals. And our answer is 2.5. It's 2 and a half. So there you go. My equation looks like this. n minus 85 hundredths is 2 and 5 tenths. And so when you solve, what you're going to do is do the inverse operation, which means the opposite. I'm going to add 85 hundredths to both sides. When I add decimals, I line them up according to the decimal point. So then therefore, n is equal to, and I'll fill in gaps of zeros. This is 3.35. 3 and 35 hundredths. OK? How are we feeling about that so far? Sweet. <laughs> Great, huh? So cynical. OK, here we go. Number two, key words you need to know is the word sum. Sum is the answer to an addition problem. So I know my equation is going to look something like this. Here's the shape of it. OK? I go into the word problem and I discover two things. I know that I'm going to be adding this number and negative 6. So I'll write here n and negative 6. The sum of it is 25. So that's why 25 goes at the end. I don't get it, Mr. Kim. 25 was the first number. Shouldn't that be the first number in our equation? Not necessarily. Because of the way this sentence is written, it says 25 is what? The sum. So if you don't know that the sum is an addition answer, you would, you would put it in the front. OK, but with that vocabulary, you know why it belongs in the back. n plus negative 6 is 25. The opposite of adding is subtracting. So I will subtract negative 6 from both sides. This makes a zero pair after I do my sign changes. See, negative 6, positive 6, that makes 0. 25 plus 6 makes 31. n is 31. Questions on that guy so far? Are we doing OK? Three. <laughs> and number three, keyword I'm circling is product. What does product mean? When you take two numbers and multiply, their answer is known as a product. OK, what are the numbers I'm multiplying? Let's see. Well, it says 18 is the product. So that means 18 is the answer at the end. It's not a number in the front. It's a number that's the answer in the back. What am I multiplying? Some number and n. Or I'm, so, I'm sorry. Some number and n, 9. OK? If you pay attention here, this does not look like an algebra equation. Here's how I would write the equation algebraically. 9n is 18. Big difference, OK? We're starting to use algebraic handwriting and notations. When you put numbers and letters next to each other, that infer, you infer multiplication. OK? The, this is today's teaching point, but the inverse of multiplying is dividing. I'm not going to show division using this symbol, though. I, I don't want it that way. That, that would belong over here, like in third grade, OK? Here, the sixth grade on, you're going to start using the fraction bar to represent that division. So this is division of 9 on both sides. 9 divided by 9 is 1. 18 divided by 9 is 2. So 1n, or simply n, is 2. OK? 
Okay, the key word on four is to answer the word quotient, which is the answer to a division problem. So here's the general shape of the equation. Two numbers dividing each other will give you a quotient. Oh yeah. It says nine is the quotient. Again, even though nine is the first number in the sentence, it's not the first number in my equation. It's the last number because of what the vocabulary indicates. So the two numbers I'm dividing is number, which is n, or unknown, and 4. Similarly to number 3, I don't want to write it like the way you see it right now. I'm going to rewrite it like so. n divided by 4 equals 9. That's how I would represent it algebraically. That's the equation for it. And then to do the answer, to figure it out, you would do the opposite of division, which is multiplication. I'll divide, multiply by 4 on both sides. And you end up getting, well, watch this. You can cross-cancel, if I make this 4 a fraction, I could cross-cancel this 4 for that 4, leaving 1 in their places. So if I evaluate the top, that's n. If I evaluate the bottom, that's 1. And on the other side, 9 times 4 is 36. So n over 1 is the same as saying n. Answer is 36. That's a missing number. OK?